Do you, you want to do a clap? <laughs> one, one clap? <laughs> Ford, I don't think you're supposed to do that. You're also supposed to have like 20 seconds of silence after you do that. But no giggles. No, that's all right. Uh, welcome to another episode of Cool Folks stopping by the First Light Office. Uh, this is uh, kind of a really extra special one because we have Casey Barton who got roped into taking a first timer tag Spence on his first ever hunt that happened to be a doll sheep hunt. Uh, hopefully you check that out if you haven't. Uh, it's live on our YouTube channel and um, it's a really cool story. And um, joining us also is Ross Copperman. Uh, Ross, you should recognize from the video series as well, uh, had a big role in Tag's mentorship process as far as like getting comfortable with the rifle. Uh, Tag, why would you need help getting comfortable with your rifle? Well, it turned out I hadn't shot a rifle before I won this hunt, so we kind of had to start <laughs> ground zero there. And I think you're also selling yourself short here. You had to also put up with me to the extent I hadn't been in the woods by myself or just with a pack on prior to going with you. So, That's also, just, you know. Days in the woods, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. Uh, so, uh, Casey, just I'll, I'll hit you with a couple of questions real quick, but first, okay. do you want to give us the who you are, where you're from, what you do? Yeah, um, Casey Barton, obviously, uh, I'm from Emmett, Idaho, and I'm a sheep guide for Alaska hunting expeditions up in uh, Brooks Range. And how long have you been doing that? Uh, three years now. Um, so, do you want to just kind of run down, like, what do you need to do to become a guide for sheep in the Brooks Ranch. Yeah, sure. Um, so in the state of Alaska, you um, it's kind of a several year process. Uh, you have to put in like two years of mentorship under, you know, as a packer or whatever. You've got to have, I think it's 60, 60 days in the woods um, working for an outfitter. Uh, you have to be a part of, I think, three kills. Um, you have to have held a hunting license for two years in the state of Alaska. Um, and then you need a recommendation from a guide to get your assistant guide's license. So uh, you also have to uh, kill an animal yourself, right? Uh, not anymore. They actually oh, really? just changed that last year. But yeah, so up until did you last did you year, on that, though? I did not. I bought a bear tag, and like two weeks later, they changed it, and I was like, no. <laughs> there goes four hundred and fifty bucks. But. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, my experience: the old uh, outfitters and master guys never want to go that far out of their way yeah the guys pull the trigger yeah out. yeah so yeah that's a bummer uh, but in those two years a uh, little bit of a learning curve yeah definitely um you know i'd never you know spent a lot of time hunting out west obviously um so there's some similarities to hunting in alaska but different critters uh some different terrain um obviously getting with this outfit in particular, the horses, that's something that was fairly new to me. Uh, mm -hmm. That was, there's a pretty steep learning curve there for sure. Um, Extreme mountain, you know, riding. Yeah. Not <laughs> trail riding up there. Yeah, yeah, a little different. Um, a lot of bogs, a lot of riding the rivers and that kind of nasty stuff. And just packing in general. You know, I guess I'd spend quite a bit of time on horses, but just never packing. So yeah. there was, there's a lot to learn there. And, and but, probably quite a bit of trail time when you were on horses. Yeah. At least for a pretty significant portion of the ride, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and just, yeah, just to be clear, this outfit, um, you're not starting off of a major trailhead. No. That are, that are heavily used, so the trails aren't there or they aren't established. Pretty much, yeah. In a lot of places we're going, um, there really isn't a trail. You know, it's a lot of riding creek bottoms and hopping up on a ridge here and there. But, yeah, really no trails at all. Yeah. Gotcha. So. And then, uh, yeah, what uh, what kicked you, lit the fire underneath you to go from Emmett, Idaho to the Brooks Range? Um, I think that one goes back a ways. Uh, me and my dad used to go up uh, when I was in high school fishing. One of my dad's good buddies lived up there. Uh, I think the first time I went up was maybe freshman year of high school or so. And uh, I know the first time I flew into Anchorage and saw those mountains, it's like, yep, yeah, I'm going to... I've definitely got to figure out a way to either live up here or work up here or something, you know. 
just kind of fell in love with the landscapes then. Uh, and yeah, I made a couple more trips in high school fishing and then uh, I think several years ago just decided, you know what, I gotta, gotta give it a shot. So went up there and started chipping away and eventually here I am, became a guide, so. And you're, uh, you're trying to actually complete a higher level of education as well, right? I am, yeah, still chipping away at that, kind of on the 10 or 12 year plan, but <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, well don't feel bad about that. No. No. I got to, to like six or seven. And okay. Then just started guiding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, when did you find out uh, that you were gonna guide a client that had zero prior hunting experience? <laughs> um, I think it was honestly right before I went up. Um, I was talking with Jim a little bit and he was, he was you know, kind of mentioning that I may guide Tag, um, but it was still a little bit up in the air. Uh, and then Tag, you found me on Instagram, messaged yeah, me and- Yeah, uh, did some detective work. Yeah, I did a little detective work <laughs> and uh, yeah, Miles so I think- stalking. <laughs> So yeah, it was like uh, right before we went into the Brooks Range that, that I found out that yeah, I'd be guiding tag. And uh, it was actually pretty cool. I got to watch the first episode before we took off. So oh, I nice. got, <laughs> yeah, so I got a little bit of a taste of, you know, at least, you know, background on tag for sure, you know, yeah. before we went in, so. I do still remember that sitting on the ridge that first day in the fog and we're talking. And I think you were like, so is this really, like really your first big game animal? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is it. And you're like, so when you shoot a ram, I mean, that's the first thing. And you, I just remember that. So I was like, yeah, it's, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> Not making this one. <laughs> so when you got that info, though, um, you know, from your experience, was that really a positive or a negative to you? Um, like the, the lack. I mean, in the guide position, you're always... You're, no matter what the experience level is, you have the boots on the ground experience, the first hand experience of the terrain, yeah. how the animals behave in your area, um, likely spots, right? Mm -hmm. So you, no matter who shows up, you got some valuable information. Yep. Um, but in, in your experience, when you had a first time client who literally had never you know, only had a hunting license period for a year <laughs> and only had a mallard and quail under his belt, were you like, this is a, a negative or this is a positive or kind of somewhere in between? Um, you can be honest, man. Well, to be honest with you, there was, <laughs> no, I'll be honest with you. Uh, there was, I think there was definitely some positives in that. Um, I really enjoyed taking, whether it's guiding or otherwise, I. I think it's a blast taking new folks in the woods. You know, it's like there's a there's an excitement there that's not there with folks that you know do it all the time. You know, like Tag, he was honestly, it was like it was like taking a little kid in the woods. You know, because everything's brand new to him. Everything's so cool. He's never seen that. He's never seen tundra. He's never seen. You know, like everything's so. You know, it's cool that way. And the other part is um, they're more willing to learn. You know, you get some guys that they've done a lot and they've kind of got some opinions that you may or may not agree with this and <laughs> yeah exactly we're in, in you know in tax case he's like I don't have a clue what do we need to do so <laughs> so that was kind of nice but no it was I mean I wasn't I definitely wasn't like oh shit I got a, a new so guy you know you weren't fighting over who had to take tag no you know no right? not at all <laughs> not at all <laughs> and uh, yeah so I guess when uh, you're first starting out, what uh, what's kind of your assessment? My assessment, just of, of Tag and his... Uh... Like guy, any guy rolls into camp, Okay. they have their gear, Yep. they have their, their uh, attitude, demeanor, character, and yep. you're like, okay, got to spend 10, 10 days <laughs> with this dude, new best friend. Yeah. Um, with Tag, it was great. Um, I came in, I think that night we were... Just trying to get my previous client a bear. So yeah. came in late um, and got the horses put away. And I think we immediately went to the, uh, the bunkhouse there and started going through gear and just kind of feeling each other out. And honestly, I could tell 
you guys definitely did a good job. He was he was ready. You know, I could definitely tell just going through his gear and talking about things. Um, he came he came prepared, um, and he you know again he he was it's new to him, but you could definitely tell that uh, physically he was ready. Uh, obviously, with the gear, he was ready. Um, you know, shooting. He uh, he was very prepared. He was honestly more prepared than a lot of guys that come up. I mean, he was he was pretty dialed. So nice, nice. I do think I remember putting on my like ear protection on the back of my shirt maybe like two days too early. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been a little bit overexcited. There may have been a period of tag like we got to get horses. Like there's you know some things that have to be done before we can go. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. And then, so any uh, any major questions that you had to, um, before you guys stepped out of there for that you had for tag? You're like, all right, where you at shooting? Where you at? Yeah, I think that was the biggest one. Is just shooting, and that's the same thing with everybody. You know, that's one of the first questions you ask, and you really try to feel that out. Um, but tag, you know, he he pretty well knew where he was at in that department. Um, so that was that was definitely helpful. He had a you know, definitely nothing past this far. If I'm this far and I've got a really good rest, then we might be able to work with it. But no, he, uh, yeah, he knew where he was sitting there. So that was, that was helpful for sure. Which came in handy. I didn't. Yeah. And it that did. was one of those like, oh, I feel like I have to establish this. That's like a check that I'm supposed to do with my guide and we'll be on the same page. And then lo and behold, that came up twice, mm -hmm. which was, you know, crazy. Um, I'm sure it's normal. I'm learning that's more normal now. But yeah. For me, I wasn't wasn't ready for that. But fortunately, you know, I had Ross getting me ready before we took off and yeah. went up there feeling as confident as could be. I feel like you were confident in me, I hope. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I don't know, I, preparing you, and I think Casey kind of touched on it, but um, having, I don't know, shot with a bunch of people, it's, it's almost easier teaching someone who knows nothing than <laughs> teaching people who already have flinching habits or this, that, or the other, or they think they know this, or they've been, you know, whatever. So Tag was, A, he has the attitude of absolute, you know, discipline, and he'll do exactly what you ask him to do, and, you know, I'd tell him, okay, go home, put the quarter in the barrel, do that 50 times, and he'd come back and he did it 100, right? Yeah. So that part was really easy. I think... Uh, Overall, it was, I mean, we kind of set out like, okay, by, you know, July, we want you shooting comfortably at 300 and multiple angles and this, that, and the other. And we tried to have some sort of soft benchmarks and seemed to nail them every time. And it was really fun watching Tag, you know, like the first time he shot the 400 gong and, you know, there's like a little bit of surprise in your face. <laughs> yeah. I was not surprised because you had worked your way up there and it started with a really basic trigger pull and all the fundamentals and you had kind of developed all that. I think um, Cal and I were talking one day, I think based on the YouTube comments we got, you know, there were a lot of comments that were like um, very complimentary in terms of, hey, you know, Tag, you've got this great crew of experts helping you prepare. That's awesome, blah, blah, blah. But really what it was, I'm not by any means a shooting expert. I think. Cal's obviously an expert at what he does, but I think it was more a lot of people coming together and sharing what they knew. And it certainly wasn't just us. And Tag was like the sponge. So it was cool. It was kind of like the community coming together here and, and helping them out and um, getting them prepared, I guess. I thought that was kind of a cool aspect of this that maybe people didn't see was the stuff that happened outside of the camera in terms of people helping you and giving you their advice and all that sort of stuff. And, and the people that were Involved. It wasn't by any means like shooting instructors and you know Knowles instructors or whatever. It was just people who spent time doing stuff and helping you out. Yeah. And willing to give some of their personal time over yeah, to mentoring somebody, which is yeah. huge. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's the, the biggest hurdle. Uh, so Ross, like before you kick this baby bird out of the nest, was there <laughs> anything where you're like, boy, I hope this situation doesn't happen or were there, did you have anything kind of left where you're like, well, boy, I wish we had worked on this a little bit more. 
Not really. I think the one like technical component we didn't get to spend a lot of time on was, if I remember correctly, oh, we got to the point where I wanted him to be in the habit of, okay, you pull that trigger, you watch your round impact, and you cycle immediately, right? And so that you're prepared to follow up. There were like little components like that that I feel like if we had two more weeks, we could have added to the sort of the automatic process. But mm -hmm. I guess to answer your question, I think the main concern I have is probably what you two have seen a hundred times is, you know, tag shot maybe a thousand rounds or wherever it was. And every time he'd do his thing and he'd go through his emotions and he'd be very slow and pull that trigger slowly. We all know it's a very, very different situation <laughs> when you have adrenaline running through you, you're breathing like you're having a heart attack and you know, yep. you've got this opportunity. I've done it. I'm sure you guys have done it where all that stuff goes out the window and you're just like, ah, and you just <laughs> yank that trigger, right? So I think before Ty left, I think I just set him aside like three or four times, both in interviews and just like on my porch and listen, when this happens, like I think I literally told you right on your right hand, slow down. Yeah, you did. So that you just remember to do everything and you know, be barely touching that rifle and slow, pull that thing as slowly as you can because it's just so easy to throw that stuff out the window no matter if you've done it a thousand times like tag or you know, 10 times. That's, yeah. That was my concern. Yeah was that all that stuff would go out the window and he'd just yank the shit out of that thing and the next thing you know, you know, Casey's yelling at him. <laughs> Instead it was a very calm, a little back. Yeah. Yeah. We're still in yeah. an okay place. <laughs> that was impressive. By the way, hit it a little back. <laughs> so Casey, any of the stuff that we're talking about now, do you, you see any uh, connect connection to what you saw on the mountain? Um, just had a tag, you mean? Or? Yeah. Um, well, I definitely... Like, okay, I can see where you got that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Uh, definitely nothing negative. But I, I would follow up with you just as far as the sponge. He was the same way in Alaska, you know? Like, it was cool. He wanted to be involved in everything. And he yeah. wanted to learn it and, you know, know how to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, that was, that was cool. It's, it's awesome to have a guy like the, that in camp. The, the thing about... Tag, I think we talked about this, but uh, that I appreciated just like what you just said. Tag someone who likes to know how things work, yeah. not just how to do it. Yeah. And to me, that facilitates like a level of understanding whatever you're talking about that's way deeper than just, okay, I pulled that trigger slowly. You want to know why. You want to know how that firing pin works, all that sort of stuff. And I think that's all very helpful. So, again, I think a lot of credit uh, goes to Tag for being you know, pretty optimal um, student, I guess, in this process. Well, thanks. I mean, I don't know if that's deserved, but I think to Cal's point, like so many people gave their time, their knowledge, like their experience to me throughout this that I didn't want to waste any of that, whether it was time with you on the mountain, time with you in the woods, time with you at the range. Like I you know, realized the sacrifice people were making and I was blown away by it, truly. I mean, you know, there's a couple comments on the series of, I wanted to hate this guy, you know, because he won this tag. And I, <laughs> honestly, that was my first thing. Was like, people are going to hate me. <laughs> and I walk off this stage and it's like, who is this guy? And so I knew from the get-go that I really needed to just embrace him and learn. And I was overly like blown away by people's generosity. The whole hunting community is it's amazing. I mean, having picked up a couple sports later in life, I've never encountered a group of people like hunters. I mean, it's just... Everyone wants you to be successful and to learn and to enjoy it. And I mean, that really makes the experience what it is, you know. I mean? So did that, did you find that maybe contributing to pressure, like all these people help me prepare for this if I don't get this done, if I F <laughs> it up, you know, there's going to be that much more disappointment? Or did, were you able to kind of psychologically throw that out the window and be like, oh. focused on what you're doing? No, I mean, I would be lying if I didn't say that leading, like, especially the last couple of weeks leading up to it, I think everyone in this office kind of realized that I started to feel it a little, you know, You were more freaking out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, but it, I think it is, you, you do want to be successful in the amount of work that you've put into it and everyone's put into it. Um, and you know that there's certain things that'll be out of your control and accepting that is kind of what was hard. So yeah, there, there was an element of that. I also think just 
the experience that's in this office as a whole and what everyone would give an arm and a leg to have that hunt and that opportunity, you want to make the most of it too. Um, Cal had the best advice before I left and he's like, the only way you can mess this up is if you go up there and don't have fun, you know? And, and that was, that was the, that was what I needed to hear. Cause the farther in we went and you know, the closer to camp, it just, you forget about the pressure of it. it. It's so beautiful. It's the coolest place on earth. And you know, everyone says going in, like you're going to try the rest of your life to get back to sheep country. And I feel like I didn't quite realize what that meant until I got my feet on the ground there. And that just eliminated pressure. Cause you're like, this is cool no matter what. And then learning was cool. So it was, it was just fun. I, I do want to let you know to that point that, you know, before we started hitting record, we were talking about some screw ups in the field and Ross was like, whoa, yeah, one time I did this and Tag's response was like, on a sheep? <laughs> no, Tag, you were the only person who <laughs> in this office. They don't come around at every raffle. <laughs> so well, you, may, you may want to keep that under your hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't assume. <laughs> Make sure yeah. that up. Yeah, yeah. He's never been. <laughs> yes. What were some other... Uh, Screw up to me. I think the one thing we got on film was Tag had reloaded or built 20 rounds to bring <laughs> with him, and he was handing them to me, and I was putting them into a recycled uh, ammunition box. And I was looking at them as I did, and I casually looked at one, and it had no primer. That was bad. Which <laughs> Murphy's Law says that absolutely would have been the one in the chamber, right? Yep. So, were there other. Uh, setbacks or maybe I mean you had your feet your boots I mean that is the one that sticks out the most if I were to go back and redo this process the first thing I would have done at Sheep Show is spend the entire next day trying on every boot I possibly could I would have walked the whole floor and just literally gone brand to brand and tried to get an idea of what fit my foot the best because I think being a ski racer, I was like, I know how important a boot is, but I was under this impression that, oh, I can just make any boot fit my foot, as you can grind and do with a ski boot. And that quickly turned out to not be the case. I mean, that was my, all the, you know, we touched on it in the series and I think the second to last episode, but we didn't have enough time to really show all that went in. I mean, we've got footage of Cal and I sitting there talking about every boot that I had and running through the pros and the cons and overthinking it, you know, to the nine, but you can't say enough. I mean, that is so important. And I think I ended up really just getting lucky that Brent took care of me and that those, you know, boots I did put in enough miles, you know, to get them broken into the point. But for those of you guys that were watching the YouTube series and we did touch on that briefly, but that was really the period where <laughs> Tag would leave the room, you know, Tag and I and Bridget and Cal shared an office at that point, right? More yeah. or less. And uh, Tag would leave the room and we'd all look at each other and we're like, dude, he's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. We've got to get him back in the He's freaking No, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Bring it back. <laughs> And you were fine. Was that fine. was really the only item of, I think, maybe high stress. Yeah. And I, like. Cal did say, like, look, man, you can't bring two pairs of boots. Like, that's just not realistic. And I, I brought two pairs of boots. And I didn't know if do that. <laughs> or my <laughs> soul <was> up. <laughs> I kept the checks in because I just didn't know. I was like, what's going to happen to me? And Ken checks, they're all great. But it was just funny. I did. I just, I've seen a lot of failure do that has nothing to do with it anything else other than a lack of commitment on any specific item. It's like a guy who's like, yeah, I'm going to carry my bow, but you carry my rifle. And then it's like, it's go time. What do you do? And, like, <laughs> ha, ha, and then the thing's gone. You're like, okay then. You just had to commit. Yes, uh, commit. Yeah. So be happy with it. That's true. That'd be a good one. Uh, Casey, uh, I mean, just like for anybody going up on, it really doesn't even have to be sheep hunt, but what do you see? Like, what's the most common screw up? Like, what's the most common, like, boy, you got all the way here and you didn't do this? <laughs> uh, well, that's a good question. Um, 
I don't know. I'd have to think about that one a little bit. Um, gear is always a big one. I mean, there's always a lot of screw ups with gear, just not the right stuff. Uh, whether it's people not people tend to underestimate or overestimate under, under, definitely yeah. under, definitely under, um, you know, whether it's just buying cheaper stuff or, you know, you think, Oh, it's August, right? Well, you know, we get, mm -hmm. we can get a foot of snow and it can be zero degrees in August. You know, yeah. a lot of people just don't. I don't know whether it's just not putting in the research or not. I don't know, but gear's a big one. Um, I'm assuming you guys don't try and surprise them with that stuff. You probably no. Them yeah, there's them definitely them. you know some resources out yeah. there, and yeah. but um, I don't know. That's a pretty common mistake. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, be honest. I have a question. Sorry. Okay. This is yeah, go the for same it. lines as cows, but I've always wondered. So. Joe Blow shows up and he's like, I am dead not shooting out to 500. Do, in your head, do you subtract some odd percent from that? Or do you <laughs> take the client's word? I mean, where does that, um, where does that sit? From personal experience, I, that's in one ear and out the other. I've okay. heard that I don't know okay. how many times. Okay. And uh, it's not always true, yeah. you know, uh, in, in some cases, you know, but I, I, we didn't get to on tags hunt, but we try, you know, a lot of times we try to shoot beforehand before we go out, yeah. um, which can, you know, give me a little Help bit, you. Yeah. yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, I've, uh, yeah, I try to take that for with a grain of salt. matter. You're going to try and get as close as you can. Absolutely. Regardless. Yeah. Um, I don't care if he can only shoot 200 or if he says he can shoot a thousand, we're going to try to get as close as possible yeah. regardless. Um, so yeah, so we, we lost Ross. He had to go to a meeting, poor guy, but that does happen here. Yes. Um, highs and lows from the trip. I mean, like from when we started hunting, for me, and Casey touched on it, like I genuinely like just was excited. Like I just, riding in, taking in the country, it is so breathtaking up there. I was loving that. So that day, Casey kept saying, he's like, man, I don't know, like, it's a low cloud ceiling, you know, we might be limited as far as how much sheep hunting we're able to get done today. And I thought, uh-huh, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> In one ear, not the other. One ear, doesn't matter. Casey, is that a white rock or a sheep? It's like, oh my God, <laughs> let's just get there. Um, but when we got up on the ridge and have, like, just not being able to see anything was a, a bit of a like, okay, not, not exactly an ideal situation start kind of creeping in your head a little like yeah we've got eight days but one day burn doesn't feel good mm -hmm. you know and, and um fortunately had every you know all my gear up there so i was comfortable but that mental side of it was that started to kind of challenge us i think um together and uh fortunately like we've showed it, it lifted we got eyes on some rams and and that quickly changed the momentum of things. Um, the next day, and, and Rick Smith, who filmed the hunt, um, and was equally a part of it. I mean, you know from experience, these guys are doing everything, you know, and they're yeah, awesome. We should clarify here. So, uh, Rick Smith, obviously, if you gotta watch the series, somebody filmed it, right? So Rick Smith is the, uh, the videographer, field producer, um, very talented dude with camera who uh, was able to go up on that hunt. And, um, and you know, it's certainly my experience, uh, I could see it in Jim's eyes when uh, Tag and I were sitting there at Cheap Show talking talking to him about the possibility of bringing a camera guy. That's <laughs> uh, not like, super well received in the outfitting community. Because <laughs> it, typically it's like, here's somebody with no field experience that's gonna have a ton of stuff and they're gonna be needy. And it means more personnel, more logistics, um, and just basically a, a headache. And um, especially on these types of outfits, there's already a lot of things that can go wrong. So trying to get somebody who's willing to introduce, willingly introduce another scenario that can complicate things is, is pretty tough. So uh, Casey, what, what was uh, your thoughts as far as like the extra guy? Um, 
Well, it, I guess just the, the video, the extra guy is not a huge deal, but the video stuff, is, it can definitely be a challenge. Just the gear, you know, I mean, there's just so much gear and it's all gotta be protected. You know, we're packing around hard cases and stuff that takes up a lot of room in the panniers. It just, uh, I mean, we, we were pretty well maxed. <laughs> we, we, we had two pack horses with three guys, which is usually Chloe, no problem. Chloe was carrying a lot of weight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that was the biggest thing was just the room, you know, and the gear and that, that limited how long we could go and how long we could stay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it all worked out, but it was definitely, yeah, just a little bit more of a challenge. Yeah. But so we, we do have to tell the story of, you we know, do. we didn't get to show this in the film because Rick was filming. <laughs> It'd be a hard thing to turn the camera around on him. But after that first day, we were moving camp. Oh, what, be a couple miles mm -hmm. to have a better approach on the ridge where we had last seen the rams. Mm -hmm. And about, what, halfway there, the horses yeah. decided we don't want to go across the bog. And yeah, we ran into a, a, a pretty nasty bog. Um, it had definitely gotten worse from the years prior. Yeah, I mean, we used to go up, that, up, up there quite often. Um, I don't know what the deal was, but it was it was nasty, and those horses weren't having any of it. Um, and I, <laughs> we we could have we could have hopped off and let them across, no problem. But honestly, we were in a decent spot anyway, and it was a decent spot to camp. So we that, just decided to. And what contributed to it? You're saying right in the bog was a decent spot. <laughs> no, 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 right, right, shy of the bog. Yeah, right, shy of the bog. But, this is perfect. Yeah, right here, man. This is great. Yeah, we get water right here. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I also did learn the saying you can bring a horse to water but you can't make a drink because, absolutely yeah it <laughs> that didn't matter that we were close to a bog anyways right before that um rick was coming up in the, in the rear before we hit that bog and hit we jumped over a log i can't remember what but i turn around and rick is all of a sudden airborne camera <laughs> equipment and all because his saddle had completely slid he hadn't spoken up about having the saddle too loose, lands on his camera, and <laughs> turns out breaks a couple ribs. Yeah. And uh, that was all, that's, that was the day that we harvested the ram yeah. too. So, I mean, we can't do it justice because, you know, only Rick, you know, can explain the kind of pain he was in. I don't think either you or I, the rest of that day, had I didn't have a clue. Any idea. Yeah. We, had, we went up, I mean, 3,500 bird, yeah. made a stock. I mean, the guy didn't wince once, no pain. And then we started, uh, after we had harvested the ram and we started processing everything is when it was like, oh, like Rick's, Rick's pretty hurt. Yeah, he's pretty messed up. <laughs> and I mean, to go from that to climbing out, that, packing out that night, he almost went into like a delirious state of pain. It's like, <laughs> it's amazing what he was able to do. Because he actually broke a couple of ribs, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 No, it was, I, I didn't have a clue at the time. He fell off, which is, you know, happens every now and then. Not a big deal. Uh, it's like, yeah, right, Rick? He's like, yeah, man, all good. Like, okay. You know, I thought it was just a routine deal, no big deal. and. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, it looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. You know, he's hurting a little bit, but he'll be fine. Um, and I, I, I really just didn't even, I guess, didn't pay attention to it or didn't notice it all day. You know, yeah. like you said, I think we did. We climbed like 3,500 vert that day. Which, again, testament to Rick, right? Yeah, right. super impressive. A lot of folks, that would be the only thing you could notice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't until after, I think, uh, we got done cleaning that ram up and it was time to head back down and it was like, oh man, he's really struggling. Like, what happened? Are you all right, Rick? <laughs> you know, I couldn't believe it, but he was in some serious pain. I mean, yeah, he was, what did he say on a scale of one to 10? It was, <laughs> it was pretty high. It was pretty uh, telling when he started calling you Dennis. <laughs> we're, we're packing out. Trying to get us to just stop for a second to take a quick photo. And Dennis, wait, Dennis, wait. And <laughs> I look back and I'm like, Rick, did you just name the ram Dennis? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? No, Casey. 
Another Rams name is Dennis. Yeah. Yeah. Came together nicely. Yeah, he was he was definitely a little delirious, <laughs> doing some goofy stuff. But oh man, that was a lot of fun though. I I would say though, kind of the horses as a whole was a lot of fun, but an unexpected challenge. Just not only how extreme the riding was, but I mean the amount of work it takes to care for the animals. I mean, it was like, okay, it was nine o'clock. We got to go down. We got to feed and water the horses. And same thing on the pack outs, like get down there and they'd ripped yeah. out trees and <laughs> just yeah, and hooligan. So it's really cool an amazing resource to have, but a big responsibility too. And definitely got a good feel for it up there. Experience. Right. So, uh, one, one, like, shoot from the hip response to this whole story that I kept getting as I'd be like, oh, you know, something you should pay attention to. One cool thing that's happening. Um, I'd get the same response over and over again, which was like, oh, first hunt ever is a sheep hunt? Well, he's ruined. <laughs> and... I mean, I just don't think that's the case, right? I mean, you'd... no. I mean, I felt I feel so lucky to have had this be my first hunt because I had to pick up so many skills that you know I think a lot of first-time hunters would maybe have the ability to pick up over a longer period of time. So I was able to come back and go straight into deer season and enjoy it and be just so excited to go out for a couple of nights and put those skills to use and um, take everything I've learned from you guys and go out with Ford and, and Annie, which this past weekend we spent um, two nights out chasing mule deer. And I can't tell you if I've had a better two nights out. I mean, it was so much fun and I feel like I'm still learning and it's still, my pack probably weighed 60 pounds and should have weighed 40, but that was part of it. Um, and it was hard, you know, I think, that's one thing. You were still packing for a 10 day sheep hunt? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm just a sheep hunter. That's right. I told Ford there's no doll sheep here. I don't know what we're doing, but I guess we'll keep going. Um, no, it really was a ton of fun. And, um, you know, we weren't successful. And I, I think that is also something that was really, you know, something I wanted to learn too is go out there, go spend two days, have some struggles, and, and come back with a tag in my pocket and realize that's also what it's about. That's part of the learning process. So people, I think, could, could say that, and they have a right to believe, like, oh, there's no way. So you're aware it. that not all hunts are successful? <laughs> no, I'm learning. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah, I was lucky that this one was successful, and, and um, fortunately, Casey put me in the right spot. But, yeah, no, I, I think uh, I'm looking forward to hunting for a long time. And, um, you know, this, this past weekend, I was just as excited to get some elk in, you know, in the glass and watch them for an hour as I was when we got up on the ridge and found some sheep. I mean, for me, it's all just new and really cool. That's awesome. Casey, you, uh, the reason that you're here, you're heading up to hunt mule deer or elk or something right now, right? Correct. Yeah. We're yeah. going, going mule deer hunting. So. so just you, you have a tag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's nice. Up. It's nice. Yeah, <laughs> you spend a couple months hunting for other folks, which don't get me wrong. I I absolutely enjoy, but it is cool to come home and have the rifle in your hands for a little while. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little yeah. different. But. And are you in any way disappointed that it's not a doll sheep? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been spoiled. I've never uh, had a sheep tag in my hands personally. So, yeah, I haven't. I guess yeah, I'm used to this this is normal for me just deer and elk you know just a normal yeah. guy but out of the you know the guides in camp that you've been around over the last three seasons uh, how many of those guys have killed a doll a couple a couple Alaska uh, residents? A lot, yeah residents okay yeah 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 uh not many of that because even as a guide i still have to have a guide as a non-resident yeah. so yeah it's pretty tough but yeah a few of the residents have for sure yeah but, uh, it's just always an interesting thing to me like when you go to sheep show and you're in that room you can be around a lot of guys like you who have been around a lot of dead sheep <laughs> but the number of those folks 
far outweigh the number of guys that have oh, yeah. actually killed the sheep themselves. Oh yeah, I'd agree right? with that. Yeah. I'd definitely agree with that. But, but um, excited for the mule deer hunt? I am. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, yeah, we just got done with an elk hunt a couple of days ago and turning the wheels towards mule deer now. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, gonna hunt some new country we've never uh, really been into. Been looking at it on the maps for a while. But, nice. Uh, We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what we get into, but it'll be fun. I think we're going to give it a week at least, a week, 10 days, so nice. we'll see how No it goes. Uh, ponies to mess around with? No ponies. No. no. No ponies. Just our own two legs, which will be nice for a little bit. Simplifies <laughs> things. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Actually, speaking of that, now that Ross is gone, there is one more story that we have to tell that, you know, fortunately we don't have to see his reaction on it, but... <laughs> So after, you know, tagging out on day two, which was awesome, but at the same time, Casey said this, he's like, you know, this is great, but the only problem is we don't get to hunt anymore. And I was like, you know, at the, in the moment, I'm like, what do you mean? This is just the greatest thing that could happen. <laughs> and then after a day, I was like, oh, I get what he means. Uh, but obviously, I didn't want to leave. And um, so Casey put up with, you know, me kind of following him around again like a little kid like what's our chores today what do we got to do and it was like started your apprentice guide <laughs> yeah, I, tr- yeah. I tried because yeah. i wasn't going to go home and if i think if i showed back here up here early you guys probably would have just sent me home and said you're not working here anymore <laughs> you don't get it you know you can't leave the brooks range early on a sheep hunt um but part of that was we had to move some stock to to lower camp uh, for some guides coming in and uh well, we had not probably the C squad or the D squad, maybe the F squad of horses. Yeah. And uh, you could probably, you know. Yeah, so we obviously tagged out early. Um, uh, there was still another hunter in camp uh, that was still hunting. So they, once we got back to camp, obviously took the best of the herd, right? You know, so, I mean, we weren't going to be using them at the time. We didn't think we were. Um, but we came up with this idea we needed to, you know, move some stock and set up another camp um, a few miles down the river. And uh, so me and you, yeah, took off one night with a uh, bunch of new horses and a couple mules. And um, it had a little rocky start there. Yeah, the first thousand feet. <laughs> the first, yeah, a couple hundred yards we had some issues. <laughs> um, Which led to us having no horses. Yeah. So, yeah. so one... One thing will happen to another, two horses take off, a third horse takes off, and I'm on um, Hazel the mule, 19, she's 19 years old, something, yeah, like, that. something like that. And she just starts rearing up to go, and I remember Brick just saying, okay, if, if that horse is going and you don't feel comfortable, get off. Like, just save yourself. Don't worry about anything else, just get off. And I was like, okay, I got off. And I, I jump off and knock the wind out of myself, get up. And Casey's like, what are you doing? <laughs> And I was like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm sorry, I freaked out. I just, that horse was going to go really fast. I got off. He goes, well, three horses on the loose is better than four horses on the loose. And now we have no one. No, no, no horses. We walked, I don't know, 500 yards down the trail and fortunately found yeah. one who was one of the horses first year in camp. Yeah. All spooked, but the saddle had slipped, so it stopped. Yeah, so that was kind of what... What started? The, well, we had two two horses that were brand new, two really young horses. Um, uh, well, we had one loose to start with, and I think you were pony and the other. Yeah. And she got loose, and those two together is trouble. Those are just we we were calling them dumb and dumber all season. They're just they're a mess together, and uh, so my pack horse, um, I think saddle was starting to roll a little bit. So I hopped off yeah. and was adjusting the saddle, and it. I mean, stupid, stupid mistake. I didn't tie my horse off or anything. I didn't even undo the lead rope. I was just kind of holding on to him by the hal- by the halter and adjusting that pack saddle. And Dumb and Dumber just took off, spooked on something and took off running. And of course, the horse that I was adjusting the pack saddle on, she's a pretty skittish horse anyhow. She bolts the horse, my horse, that I'm holding on to by the halter bolts, I, you know, I didn't have yep. a chance. So he takes off and then tag with, on Hazel, Hazel takes off and it's through the timber there, pretty thick stuff and probably a decent idea to hop off, honestly. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. I just, 
That's what I thought. And then we, we stop. Uh, you try to track them. You track them all the way down to the first river crossing. You yeah. come back and like, ah, oh, Casey, I got some bad news. Like, well, what could be worse than this? And I'm like, well, my rifle was on Hazel. And it was like, <laughs> oh, it's not my rifle. It's Ross's rifle. Oh. And, oh, man, it was like, that just made it even more, even worse because who knows how far these horses are going to run and if what was going to happen to that rifle and then I was going to have to come back and be like, Ross, okay, well, got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> We got a ram. Let's start there. But I don't have your rifle. But <laughs> that right there made it worth staying in camp. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, totally. that's a good story. Totally. I mean, full, not full Alaskan experience, but got a taste of it. Yeah. I'd say kind of being left in the woods with nothing. Yeah, and then you had six back. days towards your guide's license up there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Working on that second career. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So, yeah, man, uh, what, uh, where are you heading next, Tag? What's your program? Oh, I'm going to go chase some chucker this weekend with my soon-to-be father-in-law. And then I would love to get back and only be a couple days left in mule deer, but a forky would be awesome. I'd yeah. Be so pumped to uh, try to put a deer in the freezer. So see if we can't string together a couple before work or after work hunts. Um, and then after that, I don't know. I guess I don't. I, I don't know what happens. To, you know, honey, this is there. Where do we go? <laughs> Case. Um. Yeah, got the mule deer hunt coming up. Um. And then I'm gonna go spend a little bit of time in Montana chasing sheep, actually for myself for the first time. So. Oh yeah. So there's only one. There's three unlimited zones in Montana. Mm-hmm. Two of them have actually quoted out. Correct. Already. Um, Correct. There's only one left. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 She's still open. So uh, high expectations. Ah, uh, I don't know. Good about having sheep tag I feel pretty stoked to have a sheep tag in hand. Honestly, that's how I'm looking at it. Uh, no, it'll be cool just to go chase them around a little bit and yeah. see what we can get into. But yeah. Yeah. I'll probably hit that. that. Uh, Montana's definitely been getting a little bit more weather than here. Yeah. And uh, that's the unit that needs needs some weather. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that goes with you. Yep, I'm hoping so as well. So we'll see. Going to probably spend uh, just under a month there. and Who knows? We'll see how it goes. But nice. I'm excited. So. Nice. So then it'll just be like raring to go come uh, next semester, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to dive back into the books. But... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, man, any, uh, parting words of wisdom from where like, you saw a tag start, uh, to finish, um, uh, where, uh, what he should keep in mind here in his next couple weeks of hunting season? Um, I don't know. I would say, you know, you're off to a pretty good start in, uh, in the early hunting career. Um, I would say just continue to have the same attitude that you've gone into this whole thing with, and I think you're going to do great. Honestly, um, yeah, it was great having you in camp, and like I like I mentioned earlier, just the uh, the willingness to learn and the, the attention to detail and all that stuff was that stuff makes a big difference, and you know it helps you out as well. So, yeah, I think uh, I think in the years to come, uh, you uh, yeah, you're well on your way to to being able to do this on your own and stuff. So yeah, it'll be fun to hear from you and keep in touch and see how things go for you. Thanks, bud. Appreciate that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, your next sheep client comes into camp. Yeah. Ideally, where are they experience level? Like, what what would your ideal client be? Um, ideal client would be the guys that I love. I guess that walk into sheep con- or uh, into into sheep camp are the guys that. The blue collar guys that have saved up forever, you know, that have done a lot of hunting on their own. Uh, th- this is like their one hunt that they've been saving up for forever, and they kind of know what they're doing. That's like the ideal. That's that's the guy that I love. Love to not. I love taking all of them. I really do. But that's yeah. that that guy is. He's a lot of fun. Uh, appreci- appreciation um, or what? Uh, what kind of sets the attitude apart for you? It's, I, I think, 
it means, I, I wouldn't say more, you know, even those guys that have done it for, you know, the guys that already have a Grand Slam or whatever, a lot of those guys, it means quite a bit, you know, yeah. you can definitely tell. But uh, I don't know, there's a different different feel with that guy that's like, this is his one opportunity, he's never going to be able to do this again, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty special, that's a lot of fun to be a part of. Yeah, maybe a little bit more uh, on the line for you as well. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit. A little bit. You got the guy who's working on his second Grand Slam. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's interesting. Uh, well, man, I really appreciate you uh, stopping by on your way to go hunt. I know it probably doesn't feel good spinning your wheels <laughs> here instead of being on the mountain. <laughs> no worries. Stuff, but it's a blast. Uh, we really appreciate it and appreciate uh, you know taking the first timer up on the mountain. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, any parting words of wisdom? Me? <laughs> it's like, Casey already gave his. No one wants to hear my party. Oh, man. You know, the one thing I took away from this that I want to try to carry through the rest of my hunting career is that there's no one way to do anything. I think getting advice from so many people is incredibly helpful, but can sometimes also be equally as overwhelming because everyone does things their way and, and it, th ways that work for them. Um, and I think you can't get stuck on learning it one way or using one certain piece of gear one way or, you know, going about any process one way. I think uh, you got to just go with your gut and what works for you and just stick with it and don't get overwhelmed because there's a lot of info. I mean, there's just a lot of good gear. There's a lot of... A lot of stuff out there for you to get your hands on and, and it can only lead to confusion um, sometimes. So I'd just say like, that's one thing I had to finally realize with, with boots and, and other pieces is like, let's go with it. To your point, commit. Um, and don't feel like what you have, if it's not, you know, what other people perceive to be the absolute best, that shouldn't keep you out of the woods. And that shouldn't keep you from going after it because uh, you can get it done a number of different ways. So. That's what I try to think now. I like it. No excuses, just get after it. Yeah, you agree with that, Casey? I'd agree with that, yeah. I think there's a lot of truth in that, so. You're off on the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who have not seen it, I uh, highly encourage you to check out uh, Tag's Doll Sheep Hunt uh, Odyssey in the Brooks Range, and um, you get to watch him go from a brand new hunter, um, who literally had never fired a rifle to uh, you know a seasoned pro that you see before you now. <laughs> um, really, really cool series, um, and I think uh, you'll get a lot out of it. And you'll know that um, you know uh, some of these hunts out there are uh, special for a lot of different reasons, um, and you don't have to be an ultra seasoned badass to go on them. Sometimes you just need a lucky break and get a tag. Um, and uh, lots to be learned out there on any hunt, uh, even going from doll sheep to a forked horn mule deer. Uh, so, yep, check out firstlight.com um, and check out the YouTube series on YouTube. And uh, we have another one coming up uh, featuring Taylor Chamberlain hunting urban whitetails. Another very cool story and very different. Um, but thanks for tuning in and look forward to another episode of Cool Folks Stopping by the Office. <laughs>